Hope the audio isn't too bad here. I'm on my phone again. Before I get to the um, article that I want to show you, I just want to ask people who haven't rated uh, Elite Battle Angel on Rotten Tomatoes to do so. Uh, uh, the score went down. It was at 94% for pretty much the whole year. And it. Um, I think the only other time it was at 93% was when it first debuted in the theater. And it was like... Um, yeah, I think it was 93% for February, and then I guess in March it went up to 94%, and it's pretty much held steady at 94% this whole time. So I think it was last week or whatever, yeah, someone um, noticed that it had went down to 93% again. So what I'm going to be asking people to do is to um, vote if you haven't, not vote, but uh, review the movie if you haven't. Of course, give it a positive score. Don't you sh probably shouldn't give it a ten because if you do that, they may um, just try to wipe that from the system and think it's a. It's, they, it may not count. So I would say, um, like if if there's a scale of four out of uh, five out of five, just vote four out of five. Or if it's um, if it's ten stars, just vote nine out of ten instead of those those extremes like one out of five or five out of five those are probably not get counted as much i guess it depends on their bias but just to be safe give it like a nine out of ten or a four out of five or four and a half out of five i'm uh, sorry about the notification I forgot to turn that off <laughs> uh, so yeah do that and and if you know of anyone anyone else who has just seen the movie and they seem to like it and whatnot tell them um Hey, buy the Blu-ray, review the movie online, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, tell other people to watch the movie, and sign, hey, sign a petition too, sign a petition. So, uh, that right, moving past that now, I guess what I wanted to show you first was the Business Times had a, um, they put out something saying that the sequel would probably take a while and this was mostly based on Rosa Salazar's comments in an interview. So a lot of it, a lot has been coming out of what Rosa has been saying lately. And I think people are just looking for something to run. And they haven't really actually put much thought into what they're putting out there, <laughs> you know. But if I think the video that I made, I can't, I cannot remember the title of it at all, but. Uh, I think it was something about my expectations for 2021 for the Alita sequel. And of course, since then, I have sort of dialed it back a little bit because the schedule, uh, the, the schedule, Disney released a different schedule for Avatar. I think they pushed it back to 2021. And because of that, I thought, um, yeah, it might be, it might that might put the Alita sequel in a little bit of a tight spot right there. So, um, I, it, I, I'll just reiterate my new stance on when, when I think the sequel is probably coming in, in this video. So, but back to that schedule again. Um, since Cameron is going to be wrapped up in a lot of Avatar movies, and when you look at that Disney schedule, it is packed full for, I think, about seven years. You don't see any space for Alita on there. And to me, that's just another sign that Alita isn't going to be part of, part of a, a Disney release. It's going to be with another studio. I think something like this would have been discussed already with Cameron, and um, there would have been some some dates. But when you look at the Disney schedule, they they have too much on their plate already, and and it's really it's really bad, you know, because other movies can't even get a chance to to thrive in this situation. So on one hand, I don't want Disney to be involved with Alita 2, but on the other hand, Disney not being involved with Alita 2 is probably going to be uh, a, a bad situation as well. When you look at the way these other movies are doing right now in the theaters, they are struggling to, to be able to keep up with Disney. And one of the reasons why is that when Disney, Disney has so much pull, they have so much leverage, uh, as I've said before, they're pretty much like the biggest shareholders right now, but they have so much pull that they can say to a, a theater, we want the biggest screens, we want the best show times, we want this many screens. And what the theaters have to do is they have to say, okay, well, we have to take something out. Something has to go. 
And and as you saw with Dark Phoenix, Dark Phoenix got pulled extremely quickly, uh, even though, you know, it wasn't really doing great, but it got pulled quickly so that they that Disney could actually put um, the Avengers release re-release on more screens and help them get over that that Avatar um, that hype, you know, help them pass Avatar on the all time uh, box office list or whatever, even though Avatar is probably still higher if you're just for inflation. But anyway, this so Disney has the most muscle, and, and Disney is pretty much owning these theaters right now, and they can and they can demand that a movie like Alita Two, for if it if it runs up against any other of their properties, which it probably will, because they have so many movies coming out, that Disney can say. Well, yeah, Alita Two is in James Cameron's Alita Two is in theaters right now, but we have freaking like what? Um, let's just say I'm just Dumbo Two or something, right? Dumbo Two coming out uh, in four weeks. We're gonna need some of those screens, so get Alita Two out of there and put our Dumbo Two in that movie theater, and, and we want it on this many screens. So that's gonna be rough for Alita, but I think it's worth it. Um, for Alita to be completely separated from Disney and, and not and not have them have any input on the movie at all, and but I'm not too worried. Even if it did ended up um, did end up being pub, not published, but you know distributed by Disney and and let's say Cameron d- it did end up working with Disney on a sequel, I, I'm not telling you guys to worry too much about that because. I don't believe that Cameron is going to allow Disney to to influence what he does with their movie at all. And you know Disney. They're going to Disneyfy everything. I don't I'm not expecting any more good X-Men movies to come out of Disney. I'm not expecting Deadpool 2 to be R-rated. I believe they're going to go for PG-13. They've already tested that when they released that Christmas Deadpool movie or whatever. They've tested it as a, as a PG-13 movie already to see how successful it could be. I'm not expecting them to go um, with keeping the true the true spirit of those X-Men, those darker, more adult movies at all. Um, so I would expect them to want to do the same thing with Alita, and I don't believe Cameron is going to allow it. And that is one reason why I don't believe this partnership is ever going to happen for Alita 2. I believe Cameron is going to go somewhere else. Uh, so um, I think that's pretty much r- settled on that. Let's move on with this article here. So what they're going off of in this article is where uh, Rosa Salazar says in an interview, I think it was with Screen Rant or whatever, it says so in this, but I don't, uh, let's see here, where she um she asked when well, they asked her is the sequel going to come out in like what i think it was two years or whatever and she's like is that how long you think it takes to make an alita it takes a long time to make an alita and yes while she's right it does take a long time i'll show you that the first alita movie was not actually the first alita movie was actually done in about two years maybe a little bit if you want to count the time from when robert rodriguez was was picked as a director to the release date yeah it was about it was a little bit more than two years but from principal photography it was less than two years so here's uh starting at the line where it says rosa shared this um so rosa shared that this is not the right time to do elita battle angel 2 following disney's acquisition of 21st century fox and this is her quote yeah i mean they had a crazy merger the undone star stated people are gaining jobs people are losing jobs the whole Disney Fox acquisition is so involved. This isn't the right time for me to call Alan Horn and be like, "Hey, bro, I know you got you got a lot of things going on, a lot of stuff going on, but like, what about Alita 2? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, she would, <laughs> you know, I, I I think she would probably talk to Cameron or Orlando or Orlando about that, but she's she's going under the assumption, like a lot of people are that um, Disney is going to be uh, Alita's new distributor or Alita 2's, you know, new distributor. But as she said in the other, and I don't actually have that one pulled up, 
as the as the, the article that I showed you last night or this morning, whatever whenever you looked at it, that she hasn't been given any real information about the sequel at all. So she's just kind of just as lost, not lost. She's just she as informed as we are basically, and. Just because she's an actress doesn't mean that she gets to know everything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, so we're just going to have to piece these things together ourselves. And not and the media isn't helping us because they don't seem to be able to also do research these days. So, But the thing is, there's no reason to expect or no reason to believe for sure that Disney will be involved with, with um, Alita 2. So this whole thing about the merger being um, affecting the sequel, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not sold on that because Cameron can always take a leader to a different studio for distribution, and not only that, but it only affected the first movie really because the social media went down. I think it was late March, between late March and mid April, where the social media account went down. And we, the Alita Army, was pretty much all that Alita had for promotion, for um, defense, you know, for offensive defense. That was the Alita Army. We stepped up and we we filled the gap where the social media was was down. And so, um, moving on past that, so um, Salazar is just as informed as most of us are. Let's get the the actual production the production timeline here from Wikipedia. It says here that that Robert Rodriguez was announced as director in April 2016 with Salazar cast the following month. Principal photography began in Austin, Texas, mostly at Rodriguez's Troublemaker Studios in October 2016. Um, principal photography, I think that's pretty much the, the when the movie is actually going into production before then you know you have casting and all this other stuff but here's the thing a lot of that stuff is done <laughs> like the you know they have rodriguez the set is built uh of course they still have to do like for the sequel they'll do principal photography and all of that and they'll do some new casting too depending on how many new characters they bring in but mm. they've all right i had another notification i should have turned it off but i turned it off now so let's just, I'm going to keep going, even though I kind of lost my place because of that. I'm just going to keep going. The the movie, the sequel, so they would have to do casting, but they've already have the notes written for the sequel. Of course, they would have to get the script written out. Uh, but I think the the timeline, the reasonable, I think a reasonable timeline for the sequel, in my opinion, this is just my personal opinion, would be in around November or something when Terminator Dark Fate is in theaters and Cameron has time to think about other things besides Avatar and Terminator, then he'll say, "Okay, I can jump back on to Alita because I think he, I think he has a a thing where he likes to work on two movies at a time. So I think then he's going to jump back onto Alita and maybe the, the movie will go into production then. So I'm not really expecting to hear anything about the sequel until fall and maybe um, November, especially when Terminator is in the theater, and so." You would have casting begin. That would, and if and if if it was to begin from that point in November, it would two years would be um, late 2021, right? Late 2021, we would actually have a movie in theaters, like November, December. But since Avatar two, I believe it was, or was it three? I don't know. I think Avatar two is going to be released in December 2021. That kind of threw a monkey wrench in things for my for my idea for my plan. So now, I would think that instead of um, the movie coming out in late 2021, I would say maybe early 2022, probably around the same time the first Alita came out, maybe February March 2022, maybe. Uh, I think it would be uh, I think pushing it back to June would probably the summer I th it could make it i think it could be a, a good summer movie but i would expect that february would be february march would be a nice spot for alita again or the sequel so i'm expecting an alita 2 in theaters by 
spring uh, 2022. That's my whole thought. Because I don't, I do not believe that they're going to have to do that much more work than they did on the first movie. The set is already built. They already have a lot of the script ideas done. They only have to cast a few more people. They have Rosa Salazar. That's the main thing. And they have much less work to do this time around. And the budget is going to be smaller because so much work is already done. So much work is already accomplished. You have the, the models for Alita built and so on. And it's just going to be a lot easier to do this sequel than it was to do the first movie. So that's my that's my expectation. Late, I mean, early 2022, spring 2022. That's what I'm expecting. Um, and this is all based on th reading things as simple as, you know, looking at the production of the first movie and also looking at Cameron's schedule and how he likes to work. And I, I think there's really nothing else that factors into this, especially regarding Disney. I don't know why the people just keep bringing up Disney for some reason. And I just don't think they know that Cameron is not bound by Disney. And it might just be because they also want to push Disney. <laughs> you know, maybe they want us to ask for Maybe they're, they're trying in a way to, to get Disney to take hold of Alita. And maybe that's why they keep saying, go ask Disney for an Alita 2. Push Disney for an Alita 2. Push Disney. And, and they've been doing that for a couple months now. And my whole position this whole time was, no, Disney, Alita does not need Disney. All right? Alita does not need Disney. You can see my old videos about that. Alita does not need Disney. So I think I said enough. So... Thank you all for listening and, and I'll talk to you later.